It's now less than two hours until we hear from the RBA Governor. He'll be questioned for a couple of hours over his strategy and what is to come for mortgage holders in the months and potentially uh, the year ahead. Let's go to the Shadow Finance Minister, Jane Hume, who joins us uh, from Canberra. What are you expecting to hear from the Governor? What do you uh, need to hear? Laura, uh, Philip Lowe appearing today is an extraordinary opportunity to essentially pick the brain of an economist that is in that uh, sees data that no one else can see. We really want to understand what the drivers are to this inflationary environment, where he potentially sees inflation going in the, in the medium term and also in the long term, whether it's peaked or whether there's still more pain to come. Uh, you know, the economist Chris Richardson said the other day that the RBA has essentially been sending up a, a distress signal to the government saying that doing all the heavy lifting on tackling inflation can't just be left to the government, to, can't just be left to the RBA. It also is the responsibility for the government, you know, and they really have left that job of tackling inflation, tackling the rising cost of living, only to, to, to one arm. There are two levers that you can pull. There's the monetary lever and there's the fiscal lever. And, uh, and we want to hear from Philip Lowe as to what it is that he needs from this government to help him do the best job that he can to tackle the rising inflation crisis that's facing Australians right now yeah, and the has... rising cost of living that's going with it. Yeah, he has signalled that he wants the government to do more. Uh, there's a second budget coming up from Jim Chalmers, not far away. What do you want to see in that well, we would hope that it doesn't reflect the first budget, which is one of the things that we're prosecuting in estimates right now. I can certainly say that the additional $23 billion in spending that we saw from the Labor government wouldn't be helping with the inflation crisis and the in that increasing cost of living. Well, we, we wouldn't have done that extra $23 billion in additional spending. We wouldn't have done $43 billion in off-balance sheet spending, which the IMF have said is inflationary, immediately adds to debt, immediately uh, increases the deficit because of the interest repayments and has inflationary pressures. Uh, we certainly wouldn't have seen uh, interventions into, um, into the energy market that would not just uh, you know, affect the you know, prices now, but potentially threaten supply in the long term. And, uh, and, and most importantly, we would have had an economic plan that would have seen a credible pathway back to surplus and assistance for Australians that are facing cost of living crisis right now. It doesn't matter whether they're feeling it at you know, the petrol bars or the grocery mm. checkout or when they're paying their mortgage rates or when they're paying their rent. You know, Australians are doing it tough and they're looking to their government for help. They're crying out for assistance. And instead, the priorities of this government mean that the inflation crisis, that the cost of living crisis is simply getting worse. So you think this upcoming budget shouldn't have a single dollar of new spending because it would be inflationary? That's... Uh, th They've already signalled. In fact, I think I just heard uh, Stephen Kennedy say it just before that there is going to be increased debts, increased deficits over the medium term. Now, increased deficits, that's the signal to the Reserve Bank. That's the signal to the Reserve Bank that unfortunately the job of dealing with inflation is yours. It's not the government's. They've essentially abdicated the space. Mm. There's a, they've absolved themselves from all responsibility here. Now, that's not suitable. That's not appropriate economic management. When we were in government, we made sure that uh, you know, fiscal policy and monetary policy moved in the same direction, that, that they were aligned. And we keep hearing that. Uh, from members of the government, but don't look at what they say, look at what they do, because this is quite the opposite message coming from Stephen Kennedy today to the yeah. one that we are hearing coming out of the mouth of Jim Chalmers. We, I mean, how, how are they not aligned? I mean, it's, we don't have a Liz Truss situation here, you'd agree? A Liz Truss situation? What yeah. do you mean? Well, Liz Truss, um, when she became a Prime Minister, was uh, working at completely at odds with the central bank in the UK. And that's why she didn't last uh, so long. I think that's exactly what we've got going on here. When you have a, a government that continues to spend, that continues to have no credible pathway back to service, in fact, they didn't even have in their last budget an objective of a balanced budget. That's the first time since the 1990s that anyone could remember a budget that didn't even have an objective of retaining to balance. 
Well, that means that you're turning over all the hard work, all the heavy lifting to the RBA to tackle inflation. Mm -hmm. And then you can point the finger to, to Philip Lowe and blame him, which is exactly what so many members of the government have done in an entirely inappropriate way, interfering in the RBA's decision-making processes. So no, we don't think that they've tackled this problem at all. They said they came to government saying that they had an economic plan and yet they've failed to demonstrate that they have one that's going to assist, uh, assist ordinary Australians with the problems that they're facing right now and return that budget back on a credible path to surplus uh, to make sure that, uh, that, that we return the, the economy to an even keel and reduce the cost of living pressures on ordinary Australians. Well, when you say there's been uh, intervention or interference with the RBA, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the comments of, of Stephen Jones? I, I, not just Stephen Jones, but certainly Stephen Jones. I think that they were incredibly out of line. Uh, you know, th th you've got the RBA governor coming out and saying one thing and Stephen Jones coming out and saying another, and yet at the same time saying, oh, well, it's an entirely independent organisation. Now, that is not the case. If it's an entirely independent organisation, you leave those decisions to them, but there's no way that this government can get away with not assisting by making yeah. sure that fiscal policy and monetary policy are aligned. Well, now, I know you Stephen had Stephen Jones, Jones on, the, on, no, on, yeah, on Pete Sky had this him morning. On, yeah, that's right. And yeah. he said, you know, yeah. he repeated that and said, essentially, uh, he is on the side of um, mortgage holders is doing it really tough and the side of small business is doing it tough and he doesn't want to see interest rates rise on them because they're already struggling, struggling to pay pay the bills. What's controversial about I, that? I heard that, I heard that this morning and I, I, I've got to say I nearly spat out my coffee because Stephen Jones said, let me repeat what I said yesterday and then said the exact opposite to what he'd said yesterday. Stephen mm -hmm. Jones is the self-opening piñata of this government. If I were Jim Chalmers, I'd be scratching my head wondering on earth who made this appointment to the Assistant Treasurer because every time he takes a step, he seems to step in something. Uh, you know, this is a disastrous for the, for the yeah. government. So I would suggest that maybe Stephen Jones is a little bit more tempered in his responses, mm -hmm. uh, just concentrates on the job that he's supposed to be doing and let's Jim yeah. Chalmers perhaps deal with the RBO. All right, let me ask you one more thing because we've seen the CBA today, the Commonwealth Bank post a record six-month profit. This is off the back of high interest rates imposed on those very families. How should we read that? An almost $6 billion profit when people are struggling to pay their bills? Well, this is not... A, banks aren't for aren't charities, they're not not-for-profits, and certainly those uh, that profit will feed into the dividends and the share prices that uh, ordinary Australians hold. I'd imagine that anybody that has a superannuation fund should be pleased to hear that Australian companies like the CBA and other Australian companies are, are doing well.